Don in London, hello. It's April the 8th, 2010. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour could be equally addictive. Work, relationships, anything to do with collecting, materialism. You know, the world is our oyster. When we grow up, that's what we're told. And we can be anything we want to be, that's what we're told. But often we find ourselves feeling a bit fearful. And if we're feeling a bit fearful, then our feelings can get the better of us. And somewhere along the line, I found out, not unusually, that there was a way of fixing my feelings very easily and very quickly. And that was alcohol. And from fixing my feelings or taking the edge off on a daily basis, it was the first drink that did the damage, by the way, even though I didn't start drinking regularly at that very tender age. And I learned how to fix myself and take that edge off, the edge of fear, or to relax by having worked so hard I didn't know how to relax, take the edge off with a drink, find oblivion in the end. So from conviviality and joyfulness, or just being able to access the extremes of my feelings around happy or sad, love and hate. It never seemed to be balanced, peaceful. And that was because I didn't know how to deal with fear. And it's taken a long time to understand that fear in the right proportions, which keeps me alive and stops me wandering into traffic or climbing mountains without ropes like I used to, or going down potholes and doing stupid things like being drunk and doing all those things. Because I was a daredevil in my own head. I wasn't really. I was just fearful of being shown up. So I just went along for the ride and did what other people did. And that got me into, into bad company. That was me on my own, my own bad company. So joyful, convivial, extrovert, then to isolated, excluded, fearful of even stepping out the front door or opening it or opening the curtains to let the light in. Not able to open post, not able to answer the telephone. Those are the things that happen if we are unfortunate enough to keep on drinking beyond conviviality, where dependence comes in and then addiction comes in, where we can't think of anything else but stopping, and yet we cannot stop. So self-will was all right, then it became self-will to obsession, to get it right, and then self-will run riot and completely out of control. It happens, you know, addiction happens to anyone who has that susceptibility, fears in life or misunderstandings that reality, just simple reality, is far better sober than it can ever be being fixed by any outside source or substance. And it's taken me a long time, and I'm smiling a little bit about it, but at the same time it was very serious, it nearly killed me more than once intensive care. I suppose, what can one say? <coughs> How do we get out of it? Well, I couldn't do it on my own. Self-will ran riot. Self-will became self-obsession. You name it. I couldn't do it on my own. But people kept on loving me long enough, and that's family, friends, society, to have some clarity that I couldn't do it on my own, and that self-will was no good, and that I was powerless over alcohol in the end. In the end, I couldn't beat it, and I had to give up the battle of trying my self-will. So these days, it's not about having self-will to stop doing something harmful or self-harming. It's actually living well, so I don't want to self-harm, and I need to stay sober. So needs met, sober today, wants forgotten. I don't want self-will back in that same way as it used to be. But I do have choices, and the choices I get are down to learning how to be sober. And the greatest gift given to me was to learn from other people who are sober. And the greatest majority of people I've met who are sober and learned how to come out of addiction into recovery are in fellowships. And it could be any fellowship. Mine happens to be Alcoholics Anonymous, but there are so many different fellowships for different people with different substances or different behaviours. But as I said at the beginning, 
if it wasn't alcohol it was people places and things everything was out of balance anyway for April in the literature of my fellowship and that's Alcoholics Anonymous it's all about step four and looking at ourselves enough to find out who we were and who we want to be today so what does AA do for me Alcoholics Anonymous well I don't speak for it I can only say what it has done for me which is to be included back in life and has shown me a way to use a, a program of recovery which works on a daily basis it's only good for today it's only good for reality and reality is our spiritual connection to living that's what I've come to understand so for me spiritual is not necessarily connected to religion and the gift of AA is we leave our religion and our politics at the front door and the way it's described in the preamble of the AA program this little two paragraph on a card can't show it too well here is, it's a statement of intent about what AA is and how it works and it goes like this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who, who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking so that's the way in, a desire not to drink anymore there are no dues or fees, it's free for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions so we do cough up if we have some money AA is not allied with any sect it's not allied to anything any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety so we all come in with our own beliefs and understandings no matter what they are, politics, religion, just generally how we are but we're only there for one reason and that's to share experience, strength and hope of recovery and sobriety and people keep their personal beliefs because we're all unique and authentic on our own journey and we have this one similarity so it's not about believing in God or not believing in God or whatever it is it's about getting wisdom from those around us and that is spiritual if anything is so I'm very happy to have a higher power in my life and shorthand for me, God, God is truth, God is love, God works through people and it's very easy to understand that, truth, love and works through people so more than that, I'm sure if I try to define God i will be here for eternity because I cannot define, I think it, to define God is to deny God Yeah. I cannot define God. So the daily reading for today, daily reflections, takes account of step four, which is the moral inventory, which helps us change our attitude and behaviour, how we were then and how we'd like to be today. And for April 8th it says this, an inside look. We want to find exactly how, when and where our natural desires have warped it. We wish to look squarely at the unhappiness this has caused others and ourselves. By discovering that our emotional default, what our emotional deformities are, we can move toward their correction, or sometimes it's just we didn't learn our emotions. Today I'm no longer a slave to alcohol, yet in so many ways enslavement still threatens myself, my desires, even my dreams. Yet without my dreams I cannot exist. Without dreams there is nothing to keep me moving forward. I must look inside myself to free myself. I must call upon God's power, truth, love and wisdom of others to face the person I featured I feared most the true me the person God created me to be unless I can, can or until I do I will always be running and never truly free I ask God daily to show me such a freedom so as I get to the truth love and wisdom of others I find freedom to be me and that serenity prayer helps me all day long when I am in a bit of a jam or I'm just happy because it reminds me of what is possible and not possible so to God or good conscience or your higher power grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is for me just for today <laughs>